you might ask the question, why is he dressed like somebody from colonial time? Actually, my uh, inspiration for today, today is Patrick Henry. What did Patrick Henry say? There we go. Good history. So, anyway, um, I'm talking about a subject today actually that's kind of upsetting to me, and I'm <laughs> so I am trying to encourage you all to take some action, and uh, I'm trying to give you a few tools to do that, but also what I'm trying to do is keep you out of trouble. So, um, so today I'm talking about IRS disclosure and use rules. Um, and maybe you'll remember <laughs> uh, this is today. And also, my plan is exactly to post this on YouTube. And then you guys can all help me uh, to uh, have this thing go viral so that we can sort of get a little message out and make a little noise, I hope. Okay? Um, what is happening, I think all of you know, is really the tax preparation and tax consulting environment has become quite a bit less friendly in the last few years. And, um, and some of that is encompassed in what I'm talking about today. I am going to talk about disclosure and useful, but I'm also going to talk about some other developments, hopefully that you're already familiar with, but just to sort of uh, remind you as we get into uh, tax season and so forth. Reason for today, why did I want to get in front of you today, is that uh, you're now in the process of sending engagement letters to your clients. And so, um, while you're doing that, you should also be thinking about sending some of the consent forms that I'm going to be talking about. To me, they're actually more important than your engagement letters. Because I haven't heard of somebody being fined or uh, or sent to jail for not having an engagement letter. So, um, so what I'm talking about is very important from that standpoint. Okay? Um, so, uh, be aware of that. The section that we're talking about is 7216. Has anybody already been to a program related to 7216? No. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Because the, uh, the impact of this is so important, and yet it's not widely known, so that it's a trap for tax return preparers. And uh, so that's another reason for my talking about it today. The code section was actually created in 1971. The question that I asked in my outline is, what the heck was happening in 1971? I can't remember. You know, I just graduated from high school in 1970, and I don't remember uh, a controversy being in the news back then, but evidently there was something that got Congress upset, so they enacted these rules. But they were to be um, enabled by regulations. And so they sat without regulations for years and years and years until about 2008. Well, why in 2008? Well, then things were happening. So uh, specifically, H&R uh, Block and many other street uh, uh, tax return preparation services were involved in um, refund loans. And they were also getting involved in other financial services. So it became an issue of concern to Congress and the belief that there was uh, some abuse that was going on. And so there was a motivation for the IRS to take some action. The other thing that was happening about that time was that um, CPA firms, particularly the larger firms, were starting to send uh, their tax return preparation work overseas. So. That was big news because there was a big concern about privacy and what was happening with that information as it was going overseas. Has anybody here had tax return preparation work done for their firm overseas? Nobody. Okay. 
Um, it's not a bad deal or a bad idea necessarily. There is uh, some uh, uh, consensus you need to get to do it. But what I can tell you, at least is from what I've read and heard, is the security that they have for the uh, firms that provide this service overseas is actually very good. It's probably better than you or I have in our firm. Okay, I mean, literally the, the people sort of strip and get into a <laughs> other clothes. You're not allowed to take a thumb drive in or anything out. Uh, so they're very conscious of the concerns uh, from over here. And so they have gone uh, to the extreme. And also that they have very secure uh, connections uh, internet connections as far as uh, the information to send and so forth. So I know some people that have done it and they found it to be a helpful service and it can be sort of a safety valve uh, in some cases if you're understaffed. Uh, and again, I, what I would say is if you're going to do it, I would probably do it through a service that was available through uh, one of the vendors that you use for your preparation like the CERT or uh, ProSystem. Uh, these companies, uh, you know, they have relationships and again, they're, they're making sure the security is good. Alright, so these are the things that sort of uh, instigated this. Uh, but my concern related to this is that uh, the, the regulations that the IRS has issued are actually very broad and I'm going to explain to you. They're very specific. And what bothers me about it is that this talks about how we use our client information, and the, by client information, I mean literally things as the name and the address and the telephone number. Okay. <laughs> uh, so using that information for marketing other services. And this is what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so what the point is, is that my, I can understand uh, having restrictions as far as the use of information outside of your firm. Disclosure and client privacy is, we all agree, is, is very important. Um, but what we do with it inside the firm You know, we feel like, you know, this is a relationship that we have. Not only that, but what do the clients come to you for? They don't come to you. The, the regulations uh, related to tax return preparers, they're treating a tax return preparation job like a haircut. I'm going in to get a haircut, and then I'm going to leave, and that's all I did. But don't try to sell me any shampoo or any conditioner, unless you have my written permission. I mean, that's literally about what it is. It seems kind of silly. But, of course, we're not just giving a haircut. <laughs> and people aren't coming to us just for a haircut. Okay, they're not coming to us just to have a tax return prepared. They're looking for some advice, some guidance. I mean, that's part of what being a professional is about. I mean, if you're coming to a CPA, you're not going to the H&R Block. Uh, and even when they go to H&R Block, I mean, 